This week, the problem with being house rich. Building relationships is the way Mutual of Omaha has grown into one of the leading financial services companies in the world. Our reverse mortgage wholesale division is proud to carry on this 100 plus year tradition. To your borrowers, a reverse mortgage is more than a transaction. It's a promise of a better, more stress-free life. Our goal is to provide you, our valued client, with the best service and support possible so you can focus on helping your borrowers achieve the retirement of their dreams. Welcome back to the Industry Leader Update. According to the National Association of Realtors, the median price of a house in the United States is worth $190,000 more than it was a decade ago. So begins a recent blog post by Ben Carson on a website, A Wealth of Common Sense. But what is not noted is that median home prices do remain at 25 to 45% above their pre-pandemic levels in many markets across the country. Just how much unrealized gains held in home equity did American homeowners accumulate? Actually, all income groups did quite well, that according to this chart from the National Association of Realtors, or NAR. And if you look closely, you're going to notice that the lower wealth gains are for the homeowners who are in that bracket who own their home for 15 years or longer. Now, keep in mind the massive decline in home prices from 2008 to 11, which would erode the gains that they had in the first four years. So why is housing wealth so important? As we do know, for most Americans, the home does represent typically their largest financial asset. Columnist Ben Carson explains it this way. The housing market is more important for the middle class than the stock market is for the simple fact that the ownership of residential real estate is more widespread. The top 10% controls nearly 90% of the stock market, while the bottom 90%, they own more than 55% of the housing market. That is quite a concentration of wealth in our equities market. However, housing does appear to be our nation's more democratized source of wealth. Now, for our viewers, before we go any further, please do not forget, I am not a financial advisor. I'm a reverse mortgage industry commentator and analyst who's very passionate about the appropriate use and placement of a reverse mortgage to help one unlock a portion of their housing wealth. And if you would also do me a favor and hit the like button here on YouTube, it tremendously helps our ranking in that YouTube algorithm. Now back to it. While the middle class has successfully embraced home ownership and subsequently accumulated significant equity in the home, there do remain several challenges and risks. And the first is that concentrated housing wealth actually leaves the homeowner exposed to considerable losses. For example, the other 80% in this chart from Fortune represents what is your typical middle class household, where wealth is highly concentrated in their home or real estate. Why such a difference between where the wealthy and the middle class invest their money? One reason is that most Americans are not very good savers and they are typically not prone to stashing aside large sums of money into savings or investments. However, a mortgage on the home is somewhat of a forced savings plan, all in the hopes that that investment will yield substantial returns, and many times it does. Consequently, this concentration of wealth leaves much of the middle class at tremendous risk to housing market fluctuations or resets. The second is that home equ equity, excuse me, is neither liquid nor secure. History has taught us that a run-up of home appreciation can easily be erased in just a few short years and may take up to a decade to recover. For example, look at this. In Las Vegas, it took 15 years for home values to recover to their 2006 high water mark. For most markets, it wasn't until 2019 that home prices rebounded to their pre-2008 values. And don't forget inflation. You have to factor that in. Third, as an investment, home ownership involves ongoing costs. And Carson writes, For one thing, the wealth gains cited in the research by the NAR are on a gross basis. You have to net out all the ancillary costs involved with home ownership to get the real number. Things like realtor fees, closing costs, property taxes, moving expenses, insurance, upkeep and maintenance can take a huge bite out of any nominal price increases. That's a good point. So what options do homeowners have to convert an illiquid asset, such as a home, into readily available cash? Well, one is to get a home equity line of credit or HELOC, but that does require a monthly payment and that credit line could be frozen in a down housing market. Or you could sell the home and buy another, but at today's interest rates, who would want to abandon a lower mortgage rate only to jump into a new home with a higher rate and payment? 
Now there is one exception to this, and that is if one is moving from a high cost area to a low cost area. Then there's another option to sell and rent. And while that may allow one to secure their equity at today's prices, it does forego the future opportunity to accumulate home equity. But what if you don't want to pack up and sell or get a HELOC that could be frozen? There's actually one option that could secure a portion of one's home equity based on today's prices instead of waiting until the values have fallen substantially, and it doesn't even require monthly mortgage payments or even selling the home. Now, in such instances, this is where a reverse mortgage could in fact provide unsurpassed flexibility. Yes, there is a problem with being house rich if you have no desirable way to separate the equity that doesn't incur risk. However, being house rich and knowing what options are truly available can empower the homeowner to take action at a time that best suits their interests and goals. Now, what are your thoughts? Leave your comments in the comment section below. And if you'd be so kind as to share this video on LinkedIn, we thank you in advance. And I want to give a shout out to those of you that are consistently doing that. Thank you. And don't forget, we have a YouTube channel. If you'd hit the like button again, that helps us improve our algorithm and our ranking in YouTube, and you can subscribe as well. And each and every week, we bring you the latest reverse mortgage news and commentary in our weekly podcast, Peckham World Weekly, which is now on Spotify. And Apple users, you can still go to iTunes and listen and subscribe there. And you can find us at podbean.com and here at Peckham World. Thanks so much for joining us and be sure to return next week for more reverse mortgage news, commentary, and analysis here at Hackham World. Have a great week.